Hi guys, I will explain Canva Thrust. Contents will be from Canva Mechanics to Summary. As usual, I have a quiz for you. Uh, what is the correct description on Canva? The Canva cannot produce the letter force. Canva can produce the letter force without side slip angle. Canva produces uh, the side slip angle and the letter force. Uh, let's think about the front left tire without the camber. A uh, left picture uh, shows the top view and the yellow color here is the tire contact patch, uh, which is symmetric shape without the camber. And there is no lateral deformation of the longitudinal center line. Hence, a no lateral force appears. Here, a thin green color represents the unloaded tire. Let's think about the front left tire with a negative camber. Uh, when the wheel has a camber, tire contact patch goes different on its shape. Its inside is wider than outside along the long, along the tunnel direction. And as shown in the uh, front view of right picture, uh, there is a, red, a lateral deformation of the longitudinal line. Hence, a lateral force is produced. Here, the thin green color represents the unloaded tire as before. The lateral distance uh, between the red dot and the green dot stands for the lateral deformation and the vertical distance between a red dot and a blue dot stands for vertical deformation due to tire load. What happens in the tire contact patch with the camber? The right picture shows the enlarged tire contact patch of the left picture. All the numbers uh, stands for the trace of arbitrary one point of tire longitudinal center line of circumpressor surface. The definition of red dots and green dots are the same as those of the previous slide. Uh, this point passes through the location number uh, from 1 to 7 in a row uh, for each time interval delta t. Let's look into this. Uh, this point Pass the location 1 and reach, reach the location 2. Until uh, location 2, there is no deformation with respect to tire carcass in a large measure. On the other hand, uh, from location 2, this point is firmly taken to the road surface so that it cannot move along the green dots but along the red dots only. Uh, therefore, the tire with the camber experiences the deformation and the lateral force as much as blue arrows newly develops compared with the tire without the camber. The same thing happens all over the tire contact patch for all the locations in the contact with road surface. Therefore, stress distributions shown as blue arrows, are produced all over the tire contact patch. The resultant force summing up all the stress distribution produces the lateral force due to camber, that is the camber thrust. The camber thrust can be shown considering the tire geometry. In the left picture, the green point is any one point on the circumferential area in the tire contact patch. Uh, without tire load, uh, that point is supposed to be at the red point. A uh, right picture uh, shows the details by enlarging uh, this dashed box. So we can uh, describe the camber thrust F sub y gamma in terms of shear stress tau sub gamma all over the tire contact patch area, A. The resultant force of this integration is camber thrust. 
This picture shows both of two front wheels in the rear view. The left and the right camber angles are equal to each other in the driving straight ahead. This symbol of CG stands for the location of center of gravity. In the right turn, CG location moves to the upper left direction because of center pedal force and accordingly, uh, the tire load increases in the left tire. Uh, therefore, camber angle gets smaller in the left wheel and gets bigger in the right wheel. This picture uh, shows the superimposed result for both of driving straight ahead and turning right. As you can see in the picture, a left strut assembly gets more upright, and the right strut assembly gets more inclined inwards, and the CG location moves to the upper left direction. This picture is taken from my video number E1017. This explains the mechanism how side slip angle can produce the lateral force. Camber is equal to zero. In this case, if you have a negative camber, you can get the additional lateral force without the increment of side slip angle. This is a good advantage for vehicle cornering. This picture is also taken from my video number E1017. A lateral force due to camber is independent of side slip angle. In other words, uh, we can secure uh, the additional lateral force produced by negative camber on top of that by the side slip angle. The total lateral force is the sum of uh, lateral forces uh, due to side slip angle and the camber angle. Uh, normally, the lateral force uh, due to camber is 5 to 8 times less than that due to side slip angle uh, when their angles are numerically the same. This graph explains the camber effect on the lateral force. A blue color describes the lateral force along with the increment of side slip angle uh, when the camber angle is equal to zero. A negative camber makes the lateral force linearly increase in proportion to the camber angle like green color. On the other hand, positive camber makes lateral force linearly decrease in proportion to the camber angle like red color. The answer to the quiz is number two, camber can produce the lateral force without side slip angle. Here we have a summary. Camber angle can produce the lateral force without the side slip angle. Camber thrust is produced by the lateral deformation of tire. Camber angle may have different values during driving. Total resultant lateral force is the sum of the forces produced by both of side slip angle and camber angle. A negative camber angle increases the lateral force, but positive camber angle reduces the lateral force. Negative camber angle requires less side slip angle compared with the positive one for the same curved path. Normally, lateral force due to camber is 5 to 8 times less than that due to side slip angle when their angles are numerically the same. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand upcoming videos. I explain the self-aligning moment uh, with the speed increasing. Recently, I explained the forward slip and the backward slip for the tire with the camber.
the next video uh, will be tire side slip part 10. I will explain the camber effect on a lateral force. You can catch the brand new videos by free subscription. So, what are you waiting for? See you in next video. Goodbye, guys.